Hi, and uh, welcome to my channel. Welcome to Sluggish Reader. My name is Freddy, and uh, in this video, I'll be talking about a particular book that I finished today. <laughs> um, uh, so this book was uh, was something that I finished. Uh, you know, my my first uh, the first book that I finished in the month of February in 2022. Uh, so that makes this book uh, my twelfth book in uh, 2022 so uh, I think that's pretty that's quite a lot so far you know for someone who calls themselves a sluggish reader <laughs> but I can assure you many of those books that I read were fairly small books this one included actually so this one is Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress by Tai Sijie so this book was translated from the French into the English by Ina Rilke and um, so you know it's uh, Dai Sijie is actually a, a, a Chinese French novelist and he himself uh, used to be sent to uh, he was from China and he used to be sent to re-education camps when he was younger as well and uh, he was sent to somewhere in rural Sichuan and that also sort of forms the basis of the setting in this in this book so this book is also taking place in a uh, uh, rural village somewhere in the Sichuan area Sichuan province and um, I think the you know the uh, the village that sort of forms the uh, you know the setting of this book is likely inspired by uh, the author uh, author's own experience. So um, so yeah, uh, I thought that this book was was okay, and I actually gave this book uh, three stars. I typically don't make like single book review videos for uh, you know books that I gave three stars to because usually books that I uh, you know I award <laughs> three stars are books that I thought was sort of in the middle you know um, it's not too bad it's not too good it was just okay just so so and usually with books that are so so I don't have much to say about them. Um, it's kind of different when the book is like four or five stars I have a lot of praises for them or um, I could also rant about books uh, and for those books usually I would give them uh, two or one star so this book I gave it three stars although um, uh, if I were to be specific it would be slightly above three stars so I suppose there would be something extra that I want to add <laughs> uh, you know something good I suppose or you know just something that allows me to make a video but then again of course it's you know it's actually some uh, uh, it's actually 12 a.m. right now here as I'm recording and usually it is around this time that I would for some reason my brain would suddenly want to talk a lot about stuff literally stuff you know anything and I just thought, okay, why not just talk about this and harness this this talkative energy that just comes at such unfortunate time and make a video out of it. And that is why you would see, you know, you'll see my bedroom is a little bit dark right now. Um, my bedroom is usually dark, but, uh, you know, it's just... Uh, it's it's not exactly like the perfect lighting. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's a lot of preamble. Um, talking about this book, I thought that it was, um, I thought it was decently writ written, and uh, I thought that the story was kind of nice. Um, although, again, you know, because it was a book that I give three stars to, uh, it wasn't particularly memorable. I don't think that I will remember this book months or years from now or maybe even weeks I don't know I don't think that this book really left a very strong impression in me like it didn't etch any kind of impression in my heart or something like that so um, but it was a, you know still a decent book so this book uh, as I mentioned earlier it, it has this you know, uh, you know re-education re in uh, 
China as a setting. So this book takes place sometime in the 70s. And, you know, uh, the Maoist government uh, ruling China at that time and uh, many young people in China, those that are sort of considered as uh, you know, the young intellectuals coming from the bourgeois class are being sent off to rural areas, you know, villages and camps for re-education purposes uh, in which, you know, um, in the cities uh, they used to engage in, you know, sort of like uh, intellectual activities, you know, the arts and math and sciences and, uh, you know, learning a lot of those things. But um, when they were sent to uh, re-education, they were forced to do hard labors, you know, working in mines, working in, in the farms and, you know, stuff like that, just doing hard labor. And um, so we have two characters, uh, two protagonists in this book. So we have the narrator. Um, he's a, a teenage boy and uh, the second protagonist is his friend named Luo, also a teenage boy, slightly older than him, you know, older one year, I think. And um, so both of these boys, they were, you know, their parents were uh, sort of members of society with, with a high status job. Like, uh, you know, Luo's parents, for example, is a dentist. And uh, their parents were sort of, you know, suspected of, you know, because they, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were smart. <laughs> and uh, they were intellectuals. And so uh, their parents were kind of slandered. And uh, these two boys, uh, actually they're still in high school age. But then, uh, you know, they have not even started university, but they were regarded as young intellectuals. And so they were sent to uh, this village in uh, somewhere in Sichuan uh, for re-education, re uh, to do hard labors instead. And the whole thing, you know, the, the prospect of, you know, um, being sent, uh, you know, after being sent to this village, you know, their, their life is sort of bleak because, um, you know, they, they are facing this kind of like, this. there is no probability that they will make it back from re-education because the work that they have to do uh, tends to be quite uh, difficult. And so, um, so they were sent to the village and then it is there that Luo sees this uh, this, this girl that she, he finds really beautiful and he falls in love. And um, Luo has a gift, and that is he is very good at storytelling, and it is through his storytelling abilities and his stories that he's able to sort of, um, you know, um, mesmerize this girl and, uh, you know, uh, be, be his boyfriends, and so they become lovers. And around the same time, there was also another uh, youth around the same age as them uh, being sent for re-education. Uh, at, the, at the same village as well, and that youth, apparently he has a stash of books in his luggage, and um, and Luo and his narrative, uh, Luo and the narrative narrator, they they want to gain access to these books because you know partly because they are like banned books, so it's kind of like exciting, and another is like they they would love to get these books so that they would have you know, more stories that they could tell uh, this this girl that uh, Luo is in love with. So this girl is the eponymous seamstress, this little Chinese seamstress. And, uh, you know, hopefully with more stories, Luo is able to, you know, just um, introduce more stories from the outside world to this village girl, this mountain girl that he considers to be uncivilized of sorts. And, uh, and so they start to bargain with this youth whom they called Four Eyes for, you know, for, uh, Four Eyes would get them to do things for them and in return they would get books from Four Eyes. And, um, it, you know, the story sort of takes off from this and there will be some kind of conflict in which they try to get more books and, um, you know, I'm not going to spoil you on how things turn out with that, but um, 
it eventually culminates into this particular ending that involves this little Chinese seamstress and uh, you know she does something at the end that sort of surprises um, uh, you know surprises the narrator and Luo and also I uh, just kind of want to mention one thing that sort of complicates this story further is that you know Luo and this Chinese girl they are lovers but at the same time the narrator also falls in love with this Chinese, uh, Chinese seamstress so um, that's another thing that happens and so I thought, you know, uh, when I finished this story, um, the ending in particular struck me as somewhat... It, it is fascinating in a way because how the ending is framed because throughout this book, we have known this girl as someone who is called, uh, you know, this Chinese seamstress. We don't, we don't get a name. So this, this Chinese seamstress is just... A seamstress who happens to be pretty and who happens to be a girl that Luo likes and the narrator also likes. And um, I personally think there's something about this particular ending involving this girl that sort of makes me realize that throughout this entire book, um, I think, you know, for uh, for the most part, I think it's it's also kind of there it's just that we we are not really being uh you know our focus is not really directed to that aspect of this girl's character but um i think this book sort of bamboozles us into thinking that uh you know this book is not about that girl and but the thing is the ending involves that girl and there is this aspect of that girl that we didn't really notice while reading this book because it, you know, it sort of obfuscates that aspect of the girl, and uh, it sort of makes me realize that this, these boys throughout the book's plot, they have been objectifying this girl. They have been um, viewing this girl as just as just a prize, as just something that they can uh, can get, uh, and in order to get this girl, they have been doing all of these crazy things in the plot, you know, like bargaining for books from four eyes, you know, doing crazy wacky stuff for him, just so that they can get this girl closer to them. And it sort of dawns on me that this entire book is pretty much about how these boys are just so, they are literally um, thirsting over this girl. And it's just really interesting because it makes the objectification seems much more um, obvious once you get to the end of this book and I find it really interesting how that turns out. I'm not sure if that's the intention of the author but it 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 feels like it's a really sad I would say it's I wouldn't say really satisfying but it it is fairly satisfying. Uh, a fairly satisfying way to end this this story and uh, by the end of this book I sort of feel that there is a bit of a farcical element to it at the same time it also feels kind of triumphant and yeah that that is one aspect that I sort of like about this book it's that you know that ending sort of tells us something about this girl that we have never even realized before because the way that this book intentionally probably probably intentionally I'm just speculating uh, you know intentionally writes this girl's character to be someone who is very flat but as it turns out the ending is where this girl literally you know does something so um, but of course, um, I think some people might find this ending to be, uh, you know, not to their liking. I can certainly see why, because I don't feel that this ending is like really perfect. <laughs> I would, I don't know, I would give this ending a rating of 6 out of 10, perhaps. Uh, so yeah, that's one thing. And also, another thing about this book was... Um, before I got to this book, I sort of knew that it was going to involve 
you know, it was going to be a historical fiction taking place around the time of the uh, Maoist government in China, sometime in the 70s. And it would involve some kind of, you know, story, uh, plot uh, involving re-education. Um, and so my first thought would be that, hey, maybe this book was going to be some kind of a book that really critiques the system at the time. It would really critique, you know, the, uh, the re-education system, the, uh, the censorship that was going on, because it also mentioned, you know, stuff like banned books and how they were, like, really hidden as if they're, like, contrabands. And so I thought that this book would be filled with all of those, you know, commentary on all of those things. And I was actually quite surprised that even though this book does in fact comment a little bit on those things, it's just a little bit. The comment is actually very sparse. And for the most part, what we're seeing in this book is pretty much the boy's adventure, or I would say, you know, that tiny quest in order to win this girl's heart and how they're literally, let's say, simping over this girl. <laughs> We're using a modern term. <laughs> um, and yeah, I guess, you know, that, I was sort of surprised that that was the focus of this book. Not to say that there is, not, there is something inherently wrong with that. I think I can still appreciate a book that, you know, even though it's a, a historical fiction, but it focuses on something else, something a little bit more, you know, say, personal or something that deals with emotions or whatever. And it, I don't know, it's just different from what I expected. And I, and I think that anyone who comes into this book um, hoping to see, like, a, uh, a story that critiques staunchly the uh, the government system in China in the 1970s, um, they would probably be disappointed because I don't think that that would be something that they would see a lot. Um, because for the most part, this book is about these boys trying to win over a girl, and uh, that's it. But I think that is also the reason why I consider this book to be somewhat forgettable, because at the end of the day, this book is about how a bunch of teenagers are trying to do something, something that is, I would say, is literally driven by their raging hormones. <laughs> and uh, this book is literally about uh, infatuation, immature infatuation, and young love, and how, uh, you know, a, a young person can literally be sort of blinded by, you know, all of those emotions that are welling up inside them towards a particular person. Uh, it, you know, this book is that kind of story. And, you know, it, it, was, it was digestible. <laughs> um, I obviously was able to read it in, you know, one or two days. Uh, but overall it was, uh, you know, overall it was, it was just an okay book. If you are still interested in reading this book, um, yeah, just, I don't know. I had my expectations, so if you do have your expectations about this book as well, maybe you want to keep that in check. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess that's it for my thoughts on Balzac and uh, The Little Chinese Seamstress by Tai Sijie. And uh, what do you think about this book if you have read it? I would love to know your thoughts. And uh, yeah, anything else you want to comment? Um, I, you know, other than that, I guess I'll see you again in a different video. Um, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to go to bed right away. I know it's late at night, but, you know, <laughs> I'm in this mood to talk about stuff. But, uh, you know, I think I'm going to stop this video now, and I'll see you again sometime in other videos. Until then, take care. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye. Uh,